What's up guys, this is Eddie, welcome to a new video. In the previous episode, we leveled up our new awesome looking Spider-Man to level 30 and as I have already mentioned it, level 1 to level 30 is basically a tutorial. Real game begins after level 30. So in this video, we are going to discuss what to do after level 30. Let's go. Alright, I'm going to divide this video in parts so it will be easier for you guys to understand and follow. So first up, we're going to talk about how to level up. So once you have hit level 30, you will see that it says 30 right beside your name, but also says 34. So what is that 34? That is called combat rating. Combat rating is just another name for your level basically and to increase your combat rating, you need better gear. Like if you look at your current gear, it says item level 27, 30, etc. So what we need is to get higher item level gear compared to what we are wearing right now to get our combat rating up. So there are two ways to get gear. One way is to buy it from the vendor and other is to get loot by running different content. But don't get confused, you will still need to run content even if you want to buy the gear only from vendor because as nothing in this world is free, just like that, these vendors require certain currency from you in exchange of gear. And that currency is called source marks. You're going to need source marks to get every single thing any vendor has to offer except for the last three DLCs basically known as endgame content. Those DLCs will always have their own currency but you don't have to worry about that right now. So, in order to get source marks, you're going to open up your on duty menu and there we have a few options, omnibus and latest episodes. Now we can't run latest episodes since our level is low so ignore that and if you go for omnibus it will randomly choose a solo or duo or alert or a raid for you to play. But what we are looking for is this custom play. So click on that and here we have all the content we can play. So this is event, like right now there is LPVE event going on, uh, so we have this, then we have duo alert and raid from latest DLC, basically developers have put an event version of them here as an advertisement and introduction to new players. So yeah, go ahead, play that and you will get some gear and source marks out of it as well. Then what we are going to do is we are going to go to one player missions and as you can see we have tier 1 unlocked. So we are going to play all the solo missions one by one, then we are going to move to two player, do all the duos one by one, then alerts, four player missions and then raid eight player missions. By the time you have done all this, you will have plenty of dropped gear and source marks for you to get new gear items from the vendor. So side tip, green gear is good, blue is better than green, purple is better than both of them and gold gear which you can only get from vendor is the best of them all. So our target is to get vendor gear with source marks but on our way we will collect any green, blue or purple gear as well as long as the stats on it are green or we need to collect style. So keep on collecting all the styles and gears, it will give you feats and just to recap, more feats means more skill points and more skill points mean a badass strong character. So I know I have kind of told you already how to get gear but did I share the exact location? Well we're gonna do that right now. So once you are in House of Legends and if you're not just click on map, warp menu and click House of Legends. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go straight to the center and find this guy Tempest Fijinot. This guy right here will have gear always related to your combat rating. So like right now we are CR34 that means we can get this item level 55 gear and let's say in future we are CR70 so Tempest will have gear based on that tier level and we'll provide you gear accordingly. So this is the easiest way. Another way to get gear from vendor is to go to Watchtower and if you click on map you can see there are three wings in Watchtower, Meta, Tech and Magic. Each wing has these vendors which will provide you tier 1 gear which is CR46 gear, tier 2 which is CR57, tier 3 which is CR71 in Meta, CR80 which is uh, T4 in Magic. And after that you move on to different DLCs vendors and their open world to get higher gear but don't worry about that. So since we are CR34 we can go to meta wing, go to flash and get our CR46 gear which will give us item level 46. But should we? The answer is no. Because we already have CR55 gear unlocked from Tempest Figinot in House of Legends so so then why like why should we even buy the low level gear right? So keep that in mind. All the gear styles give you feats so once you have leveled up properly and you will have thousands of you know source marks you can always come back and get all these low tier gear styles to finish your feats and get more skill points. But for now we're gonna go uh, to House of Legends and make Tempest our BFF but again be before you buy gear run all the content our target is to level up as much as possible by using the loot drop gear and try to spend as little as we can on vendors until unless we reach end game content. Okay moving on. So now you know how to level up and how to get gear but now is the perfect time to learn your roles. So there are four roles 
DPS, tank, troll and healer. Not every power can do every role, so for example I am gadgets, I can be a controller or a DPS. If I am sorcery, electricity, celestial, nature or water, I can be a healer or a DPS. Rage, fire, ice, earth or atomic, I can be a tank or DPS. Gadgets, hardlight, mental munitions or quantum, I can be controller or DPS. So each power set can be a DPS, but alternate role is gonna be, you know, it's gonna depend on the power. Just to explain the basics, let's quickly go through each role and their purpose. Tank's job is to keep all the enemies targeted to him and away from the group. Healer's job is to heal obviously, controller's job is to provide power and buff the group and also debuff the enemies. You can see my full guide on controller here to understand different types of controllers. And last is DPS. DPS's job is to do damage. So all I'm saying is in order to enjoy the game at its fullest and complete hard missions and be a team player you need to learn your roles. I have full guides on every single power set and every role on my channel ID Gaming. Just go there and learn away. Alright moving on. So besides getting gear there are a few other things which will make your character super strong. One of them are skill points. I know I have mentioned them a lot of time in this video and previous videos but they are that important. So open up your feet menu and go through all the feats. Read them and see which feat you can do in which instance. If you can't find or understand a certain feat just google it and you are golden. So even when you're leveling up you can do a decent number of feats along the way and get skill points. The easiest way to follow is this rule that your skill point number should always be higher than your combat rating number. I will do a complete video on how to get skill points next so stay tuned for that. Next we have artifacts. Artifacts will provide you stats, some abilities and help you with your role throughout the game. So you definitely need to level up at least 3 artifacts. Like right now I was given cog of megadon for free but do I need it as dps? Not really. So depending on your role you are gonna need different artifact. Again if you check out my videos uh, on your power set and roles I have explained which artifact you need for that role and power set. So for DPS, safe way is to go for Transformation card, Strategist card and Grimorium which we can go and buy from Constantine. Once you have it, level them up with Ent Metal which drops every few minutes when you kill enemies. Then you're gonna need Catalyst which you can also get from Constantine with Source Marks. And level up your artifacts, boom, you're stronger than before. Next up, Augments. So you're going to have two types of Augments. Adaptive Augments and Origin Augments. Origin Augments are always going to be there so just pick the Augments according to your role. Whenever you will salvage gear from R&D station as we did in previous video, you can put the exabytes you get from salvaging in implants and level up your Augments. Adaptive Augments is another story, you will get these when you will read certain DLCs and you are going to need certain type of exabytes which will only drop from that DLC when you will complete missions. So level them up too. All these Augments will give you extra stats making the character stronger and your role easier to play. Next and last in the list is base buffs. So you can get these from your base, just go to your base, make sure you have you know battery in your generator, then go to other generator and unlock these tier mods by using source marks. So your target is to unlock tier 3 mods, once you have that go to base vendor and they will appear there. Get mods for your weapon, neck, chest, back, hands, legs, boots etc and this will make your character stronger. Also once you have more source marks unlock these in the generator as well like supply drop will heal you and give you some damage buff for a few seconds. Orbital strike is a burst damage which, which you can use every few minutes in combat. Henchmen will spawn next to you and do damage to your enemy for a short time. And there are tons of options with you know henchmen like green lanterns, ultraviolet lanterns, water golems and you know stuff like that. Then there is sidekick. Sidekick will heal you, damage your enemy a little bit, might give you an occasional you know shield and will also taunt your enemy to attack him instead of you. So this is really helpful in solos. So there you have it, you need all of these items to make your character stronger, so keep grinding, you got this. Last in the list is leagues and friends. In order to do missions like 4 players and 8 players, you might be queued for it and just waiting for 40 minutes and it's not popping. Well, that's because not many people are playing early game content. So in order to get people to play that, what you need is this, LFG chat. If you don't have it active by default, just go to settings, go to chat options, click edit in front of the default and make sure looking for group is green. That means it's activated basically. So let's say you want to do watchtower containment alert. So all you gotta do is go to LFG chat and write looking for people for watchtower alert PST which means please send tell. Once someone messages you to invite them, open your social menu, click on recent text, find that person's name, click on it and click invite to group. 
Once you have four players in your group, including you, just queue for your alert and you're good to go. And let's say you really hit it off with these new people with all your niceness and charms. You can add them to friend lists so you guys can play together again in the future. Another thing you want to do is to find a league. A good league with decent amount of players who log in matching your time zone is the way to go. League members will help you run content, do duos, alerts, raids, and also will help you get feeds. So find a league. Easiest way is to go to LFG again and type, just type, you know, looking for active and helpful league, new player here. And you can also use Shout Channel to do that and you should be able to find a good league. All right, so there you have it. I tried to keep it short, but there was so much to cover. I hope I didn't miss anything important, but whatever I have said in this video should set you on right track. Next episode, we will cover how to get skill points. So keep an eye on that and I will see you guys next time.